Hallelujah. Let me hear you again. Say, Yahweh is good, is he not? That's right. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk about speaking of children, a little children's game that I remember learning when I was in, in kindergarten, a little game called Follow the Leader, you know? And I remember that that game was good, I guess, to teach us about, just to begin to teach us about following the leader, something we need to learn in school. But I, I've been thinking about how this picnic's coming up on the 20th, and we're going to be doing some outreach. We're going to be preaching a gospel message, you know, but we're going to be basically saying to people, you need to follow the leader, you know? You know, yes, you, you got to ask him into your heart. Yes, you know, but you, you, after you ask him in your heart as your Savior, you got to make him your leader. You have to follow him, you know? Um, you know, we're, we're talking about going to this um, nursery home, old folks' home, you know? Yeah, we're going to be, you know, entertaining them, doing some music, some dance. But basically, we're going to be saying, you need to follow the leader, you know? I know you're old. Some of you don't know about the leader, though. Some of you have know about him but don't know him. And you, can, you need to follow him, you know? So I want you guys to turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Hallelujah. We're going to deal with, with uh, the issue of what it means to follow the leader. True discipleship. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We, we're salesmen. We tell, yes, you need your sins forgiven. Yes, you get a new start. Heaven is your, is, your, is your goal, you know, is your reward. But in order to get there, like the Beth said, the present, you need to follow the leader. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. We're going to look at the terms of authentic discipleship. You know, we look at this game, follow the leader. Basically, you're walking, you're talking. You're imitating and responding to whatever the leader does, right? Well, that, that corresponds with our relationship with Yeshua. We, that's why we sing songs like, like this. You know, you just sing a little bit, bit with me. Um, listen to Yahshua. Say what Yahshua said. Keep on looking at Yahshua. And do what Yahshua did. And he will turn your life around yes he will and you will turn this world around okay but that's why we're saying songs like that right we're talking about following the leader right amen, amen. praise Yahweh let's let's look at this Matthew 16 and I'll read real quick through here 21 through 28 It says here, from, from that time forth began Yeshua to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Hallelujah. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou sa savorest not the things that be of Elohim, but those that be of men. Then said Yeshua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man, what is it a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hallelujah. And everybody said, Hallelujah. Good is the word of Yahweh. I want you to look at the contextual um, meaning of this. 
there's some, uh, what Yeshua is saying, there's some, some very significant things that the Master is saying to us about authentic discipleship. Number one, he, he was explaining his impending sufferings. That's number one. Number two thing we see that he's doing is he, he, we see Peter's inability to accept the reality of the impending suffering that Yeshua is explaining he must go through. Number three we see is that Yeshua rebukes Peter for his satanical prompting to ignorance. Well, you know, um, basically, we see these three things, and we can apply these three things to ourselves. Number one, we as disciples following Yeshua, do we see, do we know that there's suffering that we must go through in order to follow him and achieve the goal to be where he is and where he has gone before us? You know? Are we like Peter? Do we have an inability to face the reality of the suffering that we must go through to be successful in this walk? in this follow the leadership game of life that we're playing. Do we, like Yeshua, need to rebuke certain things that the enemy, you know, puts in our lives that want to keep us, prevent us from following the leader and going through the sufferings and doing the things that we need to do, which is the will of Elohim. Like Beth said, the sufferings that, he, that we must go through to try our faith, to perfect our faith, so that we can follow the leader and be true, authentic disciples. You know? These words from Yeshua are very significant. Suffering. Following Him. Real requirements of discipleship. They are the terms by which we know that we are true disciples. There are many people that call themselves disciples. But I, I think the term discipleship has been watered down for a skeptical generation. It's been diluted. It's not the same. It doesn't mean the same to people anymore. Diedrich Bonhauer was a German theologian and pastor. In 1945, he was killed for standing against the ideology of the Nazis and um, stand up for, for standing against what they represent. He said that true discipleship is not cheap. You know? He said without, um, he said authentic discipleship basically is costly. Sister Denise preached last week, and she said something very key. She said that the free gift of salvation is the only free gift that will cost you everything. You know? It's true. You know, Yeshua never taught cheap grace. You know? So the life of a, um, a disciple is, is thrilling, it's fulfilling, and it's costly. That's why we sing songs like, um, Give it all, give it all, give it all to Yahshua. And we're not just talking about scattered dreams. And, and broken hearts. We're not just talking about the bad stuff. We give it that we think is bad. We're talking about give it all. All your, whoever you were, whoever you thought you wanted to be. Denise talked about, you know, her, her career aspirations. Give it all to Father Yahweh. You know? We give it all. We sing songs like, Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control? You can only be blessed, have peace and sweet rest, as you yield him your body and soul. You know, right? Right? Or I want to be a follower of y'all. Right? I want to be one of his disciples. It cost, right? Right? It cost. Tell me what. What, what, how's it go? What does it cost, right? To carry the cross. What do I have to do? What sufferings do I have to go through? You know? To carry that tree. I want to be a follower of the leader, right? Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We, we look at this thing. We, and we look at this Matthew 16, verse 24. And we see here four qualifications of authentic discipleship. In this one verse alone, and I want to go through them with you. Four qualifications of what it means. Okay? And the first one is desire. The message is any man will. What is your will? Ask yourself, what is my will in life? What do, what do I will to do? You know? Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead is the message. That's what Yeshua is saying. He's saying to each and every one of us, anyone will, anyone desires to follow after me, they, they must let me lead. You know? The Living Bible says, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, the New King James Version says, if anyone desires to come after me, desire, your will, it's a powerful word. Desire, uh, you know, syn synonyms for it is longing, or burning, craving, hunger, yearning, appetite, passion, lust. What is your desire in life? You know? Do you desire to follow the leader? Hallelujah. We sing songs like, As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Is he your alone, your desire alone? Is he your, what your soul panted for, like a deer panted after water? Desire is powerful, you know? Desire is at the heart of what true discipleship means and is. Amen? Desire is like an engine. It's like a motivator. Desire drives people to make decisions, to cha make changes in their life, to in the pursuit of their goal, to achieve their goal. Sister Inez desires to stay in shape, to be fit. She walks all the way up to, her, to the park every morning. And she, made it, she changed her schedule, got up earlier to go and, before work, run around the little field up by Carrick High School. Well, a guy decided to come with his dogs, I guess, and, disc and, and, and let them loose. And the dogs tend to run after people who run around the park. So now Inez is discouraged, or was discouraged. But see, she has this desire, you know, to make, take steps to continue to be in shape. So now, you know what she does? She saved up her money, and this week she has bought her this treadmill, this huge heavy thing that I had to carry up her steps. But she, and she helped me, and she... And she, a uh, big, huge thing, she's pushing, and she's strong. So, so she's, she's in shape. That girl's strong because I'm pulling, and I'm like, woo. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that Des is here to help me. Woo. But my point is that she has that motivation, that desire that, you know, that makes her, you know, do changes. She takes the steps. She does what she got to do to achieve her goal of staying in shape. But sadly, many Christians don't, simply don't desire to follow after Yeshua. Many so-called Christians, so-called disciples, you know? The message, like I said, is anyone who intends to come with me, hallelujah, it's a calculated decision. It's a choice. It's not just something you, one does in emotion. A lot of people come, you know, get all caught up in the emotion. The preaching was good. The music, and, ooh, and I can feel it. Oh, and, and, and they get the altar call, and they come down to emotion. But if emotion is all that they have, you know, driving them, it's, it's not going to last. You know, they, go, they, oh, they come down here, oh, Yeshua, come to my heart and everything. But if emotion is all that they have, they're going to be like the seed in the sower, the tail of the sower that fell on the stony ground. The roots weren't deep. The seed that fell on the, on, on, on the rocks and the sun beat down and it quickly withered and the birds, the air came down and swooped it up. The enemy, it ain't going to last if, if all they got is emotion, you know, right? We need more. We need a true desire, amen? Hallelujah. 
that burns deep down inside of us. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Authentic discipleship. A calculated decision. Yeshua himself. Turn with me. Hold your place in Matthew, but turn with me to Luke chapter 14. I want you to listen to what Yeshua says. In Luke chapter 14. We're going to start with verse 28. Hallelujah. Everyone there, say aye. aye. For which of you intending, well, let, let me start with um, verse 25. It's, the whole thing is about counting the cost, right? And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, very important. He, I can just match, see, you can picture Yeshua turning around and talking to a whole multitude. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. We're talking about counting the cost, right? And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intend to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he have laid the foundation, and it is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king going to war, make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him? With 20,000, or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all, it's all, count the cost, that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Amen? You know, this is not just some spur of moment to, to think. This is a choice that we must make. Amen? Praise Yahweh. It's a choice we must make new every day. A choice. It's not based on emotion. Every minute of the day, every hour, 365 days a year, year by year, till the end of this, of this life, it's a choice we have to make continually. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Number two thing that we see is denial, principle of true discipleship. We go back to the Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Yeshua says, he must deny himself, is what the NIV reads. Deny yourself. The Living Bible says, he must give up all right to himself. You don't have to turn there, but 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is within you, which ye have of Elohim? You know, it says, and you are not of your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Elohim with your body and in your spirit, which are Elohim's. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. The message we're speaking of here is Yeshua is saying that, you are not the driver. I, I am the driver. Amen? Too many people have this thing called self-driving, and it's not Yahweh driving. They call themselves disciples. Matthew 16, if you look at verse 25 or 26, read that with me. It says this, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's the commentary, hallelujah, that, that, you, that, that Yeshua uses to explain the 24th verse. Amen? Denial. Amen? Denial of oneself. Self is the enemy of true discipleship. Amen? Let's consider the, the word self. 
and all the different varieties of prefixes that show how, how, how self can just totally dominate us. We have self-righteousness, self-centeredness, self-interest, self-confidence, self-consciousness, self-defense, self-importance, self-indulgence, self-opinion, self-reliance, self-satisfaction, self-seeking, self-sufficient. All these selves are leading many Christians, but not Yeshua. You know? Hallelujah. Self is a great problem that we have when it comes to neglecting the terms of salvation, of what it means to be a true you know, disciple of, of, of the master. Romans 6, you don't have to turn there, says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Galatians 3.20 says, I have been crucified with Messiah, and I no longer live, but Messiah lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 5.24 says, those who belong to Messiah Yeshua have crucified, hallelujah, the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Ephesians 4.22-24, you were taught and with regard to your former ways of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like Elohim in true righteousness and holiness. Colossians 3, 9, 10 says, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of of the creator. Amen? These are the terms. These are the small prints of the, when it means to denying oneself of true discipleship. Amen? This, this is what it truly means by, by allowing him to be the driver. Let him rule. Put seeking first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Right? Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too often we allow self-interest, like, De like Denise said, keep us from the best that he has for us. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Self-indulgence. Hallelujah. Self is the enemy of true discipleship. But the third principle that, that we see about true discipleship and what it means to follow the leader is death. The NIV says, take up his cross. Looking at Matthew 16, 24, take up his cross. What does it mean? The message that Yeshua is trying to tell us is don't run from the suffering. Embrace it. Tell me, what does it cost, right, to carry the cross? I'm embracing it. I want to know, what do I have to go through to follow the leader, to, to, to achieve the goal, to be where he is? You know, what does it cost? What do I have to do? Don't run from the suffering. Too many of us are running from the suffering. You know, embrace it. We look at the context of Yeshua back in Matthew 16, 21, when he's, he's talking to the disciples. Look, he's embracing, you know, this is the suffering I must go through. He's embracing it. He's trying to get them to embrace it, to accept it. I got to go through this thing, you know, for the sake of mankind. Amen? For, for the salvation of you all, I must go through this suffering. You know? But the suffering that he went through was not the end. It was the means to the end. It was the vehicle by which um, he reached his destination. The Bible says that for the joy of what he knew would come afterwards, he went through the sufferings that he went through. Amen? Hallelujah? So we, we look at discipleship. It's a sacrificial lifestyle. Discipleship is, is a life not lived solely for one's own interest. You know, right, Nish? Right, Jamie? Maya? Will? Mark? Discipleship, you're not living for your own interest if you're a true disciple. It's a lifestyle where you're living, you know, not for what you want, what you think, what, you, what, what pleasures you all the time and what makes you comfortable in the comforts of life. Amen? Hallelujah. True discipleship, hallelujah, is about what Yahweh wants. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Calvary symbolized for Yeshua the cause of what he both lived and died for. What was the cause for what Yeshua lived and died for? I said before, it was for us, right? We sing songs like, it's for us he died, for us he cried, for us he prayed all night. We sing songs because that's what's the cause of, of, of what Calvary symbolized. For us, he did it. For love of us. Amen? And so the Bible says that we are called to die daily. Right? Just like Yeshua, Calvary meant what was for us to be with him forever. The, the cause and, and, the, and what, what, the reason why we must die daily it symbolizes our cause. Our causes, which is to what? To love him. To know him. To be with him forever. To walk with him. To, to, to be like what David said, one thing I desire, I will seek after, that is to dwell in the house of Yahweh forever, to behold his beauty, to inquire in his temple. You know, this is, this is our cause. This is, this is what it means to die daily for us. Amen? When we pick up our cross and carry it, if we don't pick up our cross and carry it like we should, then we don't, we're not loving him like we should. We're not spending the time with him like we should. If we're not, you know, Dying to self, then we need to repent and pick up our cross again and continue to be a living sacrifice that he calls us to be. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Serving him, following him. Hallelujah. The fourth requirement, hallelujah, that Yeshua has in Matthew 16, 24, is determination. He says, follow me. How many of you to raise a hand is determined to follow him? Raise your hand. You're determined to follow me. We're talking about authentic discipleship. Follow, it's a lifelong commitment, you know? A commitment like marriage. In marriage, we learn in our marriage marriage group that true love is commitment. It's not a feeling, you know? It's not because uh, true love is not I'm, I'm walking on tulips. That's No, true love is commitment. You know, for better or for worse, richer for poor, till death do us part. I'm committed to my wife, Denise, and she's committed to me. Amen? But the commitment to Father Yahweh is the greatest commitment. It is greater than your commitment to your marriage. It is greater than one's commitment to his wife or one's commitment to their husband. The commitment to marriage is even greater than a parent's commitment to their child. How do we know this? Because did we not just read that Yeshua said, Said, unless, well, matter of fact, let's, well, we read, we're ready. It says in Luke 18, 28, 29, we, we already went there. It's Peter, Peter said, we have left all we had to follow you. And Yeshua says, I tell you the truth. No one who has left home or wife or brother or, or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of Elohim will fail to receive any Many times as much in this age or in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. Amen? How, you know, this is the greatest commitment ever. It comes before your brother. You must be willing to give up your brother. You know, you must be willing to give up your mother, your father, you know, if Yahweh called you to. You, you know, even your children or your parents, if you're to children. You, you know, if you give them up, nobody, Yeshua says, that gives these up for my sake will fail to receive much more, not only in this life, but in the life to come, in heaven. Amen? Amen? But how many of us are, is exactly the opposite? We don't have that commitment that we should have. We don't, we, we, we're not determined. We don't have that determination. Matter of fact, some of us will say, well, Yahweh, if something happens to my kids, I, I, I'd be lost. I'd just, I just give up on you. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even walk for you anymore. If something happened to my, my brother, I don't know what I'd do. I just, I just give up. I'd be, you know, I just, I just give up. I, you know, you know, I, I wouldn't care anymore. If my wife, oh, I could, I don't know what would happen if something happened to my wife or my husband. Oh, man, Yahweh, I, I don't, I, I, I might be bitter against you and just, you know, that, that's not the kind of determination that he's talking about here. He's talking about a type of determination that says, whatever come, what may, whatever, I'm gonna follow the leader. That's what he's talking about, right? Right? 
whatever happens. So what if kingdoms crumble down? So what if storm clouds blow? So what if this world be destroyed? He'll take care of my soul. You know, I have no need to fear the night, the terrors it may bring. For while I'm walking in the light, I'm walking with the king. That's all. It don't, don't matter what happens to, you know, because I've forsaken all and I'm following him. Follow him. I'm determined to end this battle in him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Beth said this is a, he's a very present help, a very present help. Now he's present. That, you know, the, it's not about following him then. It's about following him now because you won't have a then if you don't follow him now. You know what I'm saying? The hardest part and the best part about this life, it will be to follow him now. It won't be hard then. Then, you know, um, the Bible says that, that eternity won't, uh, you know, won't compare to, you know, the things that, to the achievements, the things we have to go through, the sufferings of this life. You know, the things that then won't compare, you know, be, you know, because we followed him now is, and we followed him, We've been with him. We walked with him. We've talked to him. We followed him now. He's rewarded us in this life. And now we, when we get into eternity, it's going to be easy. Now we're just going to be flowing in him. We won't have to uh, struggle anymore. And so it's about now. We, we'll, we'll have followed him to the very end from this life to the next and we'll have suffered, and we'll have given up our life, and we'll have died to self and denied, and, 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 we'll, have, and we'll just sit there in eternity in all of in, in, in this praise and glory of rapture. But it's all because what we did now in the very present time of this life. Amen? With him. Amen? Because you carried your cross. Because you denied yourself. Amen? I want you guys to just think about this great the mighty Savior, this King who showed us the way, who went before us, and the cause was us. And I want you to, to, to practice every day, every morning, thinking about your cause, which is him. And that's how you show him that love. You know, you keep, he, as he's showing you the love, you give him that love, the best that he has for you, back to him. And be, be a follower, a true disciple of Yeshua the Messiah. Yahweh bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.